Today I will take you through this beautiful winter vignette and it's a little Christmas in the country scene and I will talk you through my thought process as I go through this. I'll be starting with the lightest layers first and I'm marking where the horizon line is and then painting in the sky. I'm going to keep the edges slightly rough. Sometimes I'll tape off my edges to get a straighter line but I want this one to look very organic and natural so the edges will be a little bit uneven. And after I've painted the first wash of the sky, I'm going to start marking off the roadway that you see disappearing toward the horizon line. I'm going to mix up a little bit of brown and I'll use a few different colors here. I'm adding it into some green because I want to dull down the vibrancy of the color a bit and then adding in a bit of the blue, keeping it pretty dark and pretty saturated. And then I brushed off the excess moisture on the corner there, and I'm dropping in along the horizon line, the line of trees that you can see in the reference photo on the left. This starts off a little thinner along the left side and then becomes a little more exaggerated and taller as it works over to the right side. And then I'm using that same color to start marking out the fence. The fence is most noticeable in the foreground of the picture and then really disappears toward the back. In fact, it's probably gone at the back and really just lines part of the driveway. So we'll mimic that here on the painting. It will have a bit of a triangle shape so that it gives you the illusion of receding into space. And we'll do that on both sides of the painting. The wood that has made the fence is rough hewn and asymmetrical. So I want to capture that in the painting as well. This will be a little bit uneven and jagged. And I'll extend the sides toward the edges of the painting. Then I'll go back in and pick up a bit more of the brown and mixing that up in one of the mixing wells. And I'll use that to extend the driveway. In the reference photo, that extends back toward the horizon line and curves a little bit. Whenever you're working from a photo like this, you can make adjustments to include details or leave details out that don't fit your picture. I'm going right into sketching out a rough outline for the house. And since I'm making a vertical version of this picture instead of the square version that is the reference photo, I'm omitting the tree that's in the original photo. I want to just focus on the house and the couple that's walking down the driveway with their two dogs and their Christmas tree. I'm using a muted blue gray here and filling that in. You'll see that I'll mix a lot of my colors in that bottom lower mixing well. I want to have similarity between all the colors, so a lot of them will meld together and I'll use them throughout the entire painting to have a cohesive palette. And then as I go into the white, I still have color on my brush because I don't want a pure white. I want it to have a little bit of tone to it. It's got a little bit of that bluish gray undertone so that you can see it a bit on the painting. And then picking up a little bit more of that gray, I'm going to emphasize some of the posts that are along the awning or the patio of this house. And then extending it up into the roof line to further emphasize the shadow that would be coming from the roof, overhanging the side of the house just slightly. Now I'm going to pick up a little bit more brown and I want this to be a darker color to emphasize where the windows are in the house. And you'll notice if you're watching on a larger screen, such as a TV, that I'm leaving the edges of these rough as well. I'm more concerned with getting the impression of windows as opposed to making them very exact. If you use watercolor, you know that you are probably not getting very precise lines in any way, shape, or form, and that is some of the beauty and the magic of watercolor. 
After laying that down, I'm going to put in a little bit more of the foliage that is around the edge of the house. Some little bushes along here. And these will be mostly brown to further emphasize where the edge of the house is. And then I will add the cute little chimney. In the reference photo, it's mostly in the middle of the house, but I'm adding it on the side here just to have a little bit more interest on that side of the roof. And then I'm using a very watered down version of that blue gray to create a nice, cool, transparent shadow to the left of the house. I want that extending off at an angle. It's a little bit more dynamic that way. And then I'm dropping in some of that more transparent blue along the fence line just to give the idea of some texture along that path. We'll do that same thing with the brown. You can see that there's some grass along the edge here. So we're going to mimic that in the painting as well. It's mostly along that left side of the fence, so we'll concentrate it over there. And then use that same color to start to emphasize the tire tracks that are in the country road. I'll pick up a little bit more of that blue and I'm dropping that into that yellowish brown that we just placed. It gives it a little bit more dimension and it's still wet so those colors will blend together really nicely and create a nice subtle effect. When I laid down that blue in the path, it looked more intense than I wanted it to, so I just picked up some clean water on my brush to soften that and make it a little bit more transparent. And then I'm going over that whole foreground of the road just to further blend those colors a little bit. I want the illusion of color without having any harsh lines there. And then I'm picking up some of the blue and adding a little bit more texture in that field. I want little hints of color out in that area so that it's not a blank expanse of white. And I want to keep it very general and subtle. Now that the original windows have dried, I'm coming back in with a bit deeper brown and further emphasizing the edges of those windows. It makes them stand out a little bit more and gives them a little bit more contrast. I'm picking up some blue there as well, just to keep the brown on the cool side since it's in the shadow. And I'm also going to carry it along the side of the house and emphasize that side of the roof as well. I'm going to use that same brown to add in the doorway. By the way, I'm using a size six round brush here and I'm using this brush throughout the entire video. Now I'm mixing up a bit of reddish brown. This will be used for the woman's sweater and it will be a really nice complement to some of the green trees that will be in the background. It's a subtle thing, but the green and the red will play off each other and emphasize each other. I'm just creating general shapes to indicate that there's a person on the road. These are really subtle. I'm creating the pants of the man who's next to her, and then we'll pick up some paler, lighter brown using a lot of that white and create the shirt or the jacket, as it more likely is, since it's winter. And then after blocking out the body and the arms, I need to add a head to each of these people. So I'm adding in just a little, kind of a an oval shape to each of these. The next thing that I'll add will be the tree. So I'm going to mix up some green and I don't want it to be too vibrant, so I'm adding in some brown here. In fact, I just use the green that's on the brush and then mix it into the brown that I already had in the mixing well in order to get this really nice deep green. 
And then I'm using some squiggle motions to just place that to the left. This person must be very strong if they're just schlepping this tree down the road. It's pretty impressive. <laughs> Maybe carrying it under one arm. The next thing I'll do is mix up a brown for the dogs. I want this to have a nice warm brown tone to it and it'll be a little bit brighter than some of the other tones in the painting. I want this to be a point of focus for the painting, this grouping as they walk down the road. And then I'm just using some general shapes for the dog, mostly a rectangle for the body, some thin little legs with the very point of this brush, and then a little bit of a head sticking up and looking toward the house. This one over on the right will have just a little bit of a tail. Now that I have the painting pretty well laid out, I'm going to start adding in some details. So I'm adding a little bit more brown along the driveway, further emphasizing that. I want it to stand out a bit more and lead your eye as you go toward the house. And then we'll add some more paw prints and tire tracks into the drive. I'll do that with a mix of both the brown and the blue. You'll notice that where there's white in the reference photo, it has a tone to it. It'll either be a blue tone, usually if it's in the shadow, or it'll have little bits, like warmer bits of brown poking through from where there would be some grasses and maybe some leaves left over from fall and things like that. Now I'm mixing up some blue for the shadow coming from the people and the two dogs. So I'm laying that down, also extending off to the left, similar to the angle that's coming off the house. And I want to deepen it a little bit. When I first laid down that blue, it's a little too light. Uh, so I'm coming back in with a little bit of a darker shade of blue to deepen that a little bit and then extending that over to the other person. And then we'll do that same thing for the two dogs. And then I want to emphasize the roof line a little bit more, just so that it's obvious where it begins and ends and it stands out a little bit more from the sky. It's closer to you as the viewer than the sky is, so I want it to be a little bit more defined. And then I'm going in with a little bit more green to further emphasize the trees around the house and a little bit along that horizon line as well. If you want to have a go at recreating this yourself, I've put a complete list of all the supplies that I'm using here in the video description. I've also included a link to the reference photo. I'm adding a little bit more detail around the house, especially at the front of the house. That's where most of the detail makes sense. I want most of the visual attention to be there. And then a little bit off to the right along the horizon line. to deepen the look of the sky. So I'm going to glaze it a bit with this deeper color, just mostly along the top here and along the right side, extending down ever so slightly. And I'm going to add a little bit more blue. When I first laid this down, it looked more gray than I was intending. So I'm going to come back in with more of a blue tone and further emphasize those edges. I want the deeper, darker color to be mostly along the top and the right side so that it really frames the house. I'm not doing as much of the deeper color around the house itself because I want the house to stand out from the lighter sky behind it. Here I'm bringing in that blue 
and I'm going to drop that right in along the top here. That's still wet, so it will start to blend really nicely. And especially emphasizing that right corner. I'm just using a pretty light hand here. It's always easier to add more paint than it is to try to take it away. If you do ever put in too much, you can always dry off your brush and then come back in and set it on the top paint and it will pull up some of that pigment and some of that water. I'm going to darken that shadow a little bit more with a little bit of brown and then pick up a bit more blue and go back into that sky. I really want to emphasize that very top part. This is one of my favorite parts of watercolor, the way that you can drop it into a wet wash and it just starts blending really nicely in the cotton fibers of the paper.